Hi, and welcome to Scientific Figure Preparation in Adobe Illustrator and Fiji. I'm Sarah Smith, and I'm from the Stowers Institute for Medical Research. This is part three, layout. So we'll talk about raster and vector graphics, grids and rulers, resizing our images, um, aligning and distributing our images. So last time we put images onto our page here to get our first data into our figure. Um, the images came in um, kind of large and they're also not aligned or in a pretty arrangement. Um, so we need to fix that. So to talk about resizing, let's talk a little bit about raster versus vector graphics. So Illustrator is a vector graphics program, um, which means basically the images are stored uh, as like a mathematical space where the the arrangement of the lines and shapes is specified mathematically. It's not a grid of pixels where each pixel has an identity. Our microscopy data is raster graphics where each it's a grid of pixels where each pixel has an identity. And so basically what we have here is raster graphics floating in vector space. And so the resolution of our images is not going to change when we transform the size of it um, un until we until we do something called rasterize, which is resampling the pixels. We're not going to do that yet. Right now all we're going to do is um, just change the size within our mathematical uh, world. Okay, so I want it to be about, um, let's see, I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to see, okay, let's say about 20 to 25 millimeters. That's pretty big for a publication, but this is the most important image in the world. So it's going to be 22 millimeters or 25 millimeters, let's say, whoops. I'm going to press Control-Z because I accidentally skewed it. All right, so each, I'm going to make this one 25 millimeters. And I have my lock, my lock on so that, the, that it stays. The, so the X and Y change the same. This one's going to be 25 millimeters. This one's going to be 25 millimeters. All right, so um, now I want to figure out where they're going to be on the page. And to help me, I'm going to go ahead and set up my rulers and maybe a um, uh, guide. Okay, so rulers you can turn on by going under properties. This window pops out and then if you click this, you get your little rulers up here. And this just tells you, so you get more of a real world understanding of how big your images are. Okay, so this is zero, it goes up to 180 millimeters, um, and I can position my images in there. I'm going to add a guide, and the way I'm going to do that is, I'm gonna click in the ruler out here and I'm gonna pull it out. And that's just gonna let me, give me a little space for where my panel letters are going to be. My A is going to be here. Maybe I'll have a D or an F down here, depending on how things pan out. And then I'm going to make sure that I have this edge aligned with that guide. Um, this is optional, but it, it can help you get things organized. Um, you can put as many guides as you want. And if you want your guides to always stay in the same spot and not be editable, um, then I'll click out of an outer space and I can uh, lock my guides. So now this one can't be moved anymore. All right. So I moved this this image. They're going to be in the, this order, my two channels, and then my composite. And um, I want, I really like where I've ad added this one. Um, so I'm going to zoom in so it's a little easier to see down here. All right, so I like where I've added this one. And I can, just like in PowerPoint, you have 
these little pink lines that tell you, okay, these two are aligned with each other, so I can just let it go and let it be aligned. Um, I, I also can, it gives you, it lets you know when they're spaced the same width apart from each other. If I carefully move this out, there we go, it's spaced the same width apart from each other. That's fine. Um, but we can also, especially if we have a whole lot of images that we're trying to align in a grid, it's good to use the um, align tools that are over here. So um, I'm going to make these a mess again. And I'm, I'm actually going to make this one higher for illustration purposes. OK, so I want all of these to be aligned relative to this one, because this one's just where I want it. OK, so I'm going to select all of them. And um, I'm using this selection tool. I'm going to select all of them. And then I'm going to click on this one again, my, my boss picture. And that one's going to get a blue line around it. And it, that means that it's the key object. So now this over here changes from Align to artboard, align to selection, align to key object. So we're going to align to key object. And so now when I click vertical align top, it won't align up here. Instead, it'll align to my key object. All right, now they all have the same um, position in Y. Now I want to get them um, so that they have uh, the same spacing apart in X and that it's it's a nice spacing and I want it to be consistent among all my figures so I'm going to use the same spacing all the time so that I'm going to use this little tool right here distribute spacing very handy so I want it to be one millimeter um, and I already have that set I'm going to click this and now we're, we're doing it relative to our key object this one stayed in the same place. Now these have exactly one millimeter in between them. They look beautiful, perfect, great. Now we have our images nicely laid out and we're ready to add some labels for our channels. And we're ready to add a panel letter and some text for our scale bar. And so we're ready to move on to text and we'll do that in our next part, text. Um, we'll go over the journal requirements and fonts and sizes, character styles and libraries. I'll see you then.